Today, we are gonna install a pump seal kit, vacuum pump seal kit for our 1996 through 2002 Dodge Cummins. This is one of the most common oil leaks on these trucks. Uh, it's from the vacuum pump and power steering pump assembly. Uh, right here, there's a seal inside here. and We're gonna show you that. Uh, the most common engine oil leak comes right from there on these trucks. What actually happened to this truck uh, was customer lost all power steering and all of his brake function. Uh, what he had was, he was there was a broken coupler in his, on the vacuum side of the pump, which is really common on these pumps as well. This is the two section pump. Uh, they had these pumps in the Dodge trucks from, again, like we said, 96 all the way up to 2002. Um, this what happens with these pump, these vacuum pumps is around about 150,000 miles, I guess it could happen anytime, is the drive dogs actually break off on the vacuum side. Now these vacuum pumps are very expensive. Uh, you Most of the time you won't have to buy a vacuum pump uh, that you can just fix a dog. There's a really, really good website out there called fixinrams.com uh, from Gould's Gear and Electric. Uh, they're out of North Carolina. Pete Gould, Peter Gould actually uh, helped us get the, uh, the drive gear, the drive dog for this vacuum pump. He was re really helpful. This is something that he kind of centers on. But we sell the seal kit and the seal kit is part number, is Cummins part number 4089742. And this is the reseal kit that will work for the 96 to 02 trucks. So what seals do we get in the kit? We're gonna get the main seal for the front that goes between the vacuum pump assembly and the timing cover. Then inside of here, it'll have an instruction sheet on how to install it. It comes instruction sheet on how to install it the, the right way to do so that comes with this kit. Uh, and then there'll be a small envelope in here with the rest of the seals. This is our main culprit seal. This seal right here, this is where all the oil leaks come from. We're gonna show you how to install that. Uh, this is the mating surface O-ring that comes between the two halves of the vacuum pump. And then the seal retainer has an O-ring and you get that in the kit as well. So that's everything you need to reseal this pump. Uh, we're gonna show you where the drive dog uh, broke and where we had to call uh, fixingrams.com to get it and appreciate uh, Mr. Gould taking care of us there. But we're gonna show you how to reseal this pump, which is another very common oil failure, oil leak that on this truck. I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. All right, so we've already got the pump off the truck. This is really easy to remove from the truck. It's just two bolts that holds it onto the timing cover. Uh, this is just a, uh, this is a non-timed part, so when you pull it out, you don't have to worry about marking it for any timing. There's no woodruff keys here, anything like that. You simply take your lines off, take your hydraulic lines off, uh, remove your vacuum line, take your two bolts out and remove it from the timing cover and you're good to go. And that puts it on the pump real easy to, to, to take this off. So uh, we've already put a new vacuum or a new hydraulic pump on, this new power steering pump on this. Uh, it was, you know, a, a cheap and easy part to fix. Had it already had it off the truck, went ahead and put this on. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take, show you how to take the, high, the uh, power steering pump off. 15 metric wrench for these. And we'll just go ahead and start loosening these nuts up. There's four of these which attach it to the vacuum pump. When you're working with this pump, you really want to be careful of what you do here. Uh, again, the vacuum pump is, is a very expensive part. Uh, if you bust the housing, all bets are off. Uh, you will have to get a new, um, you will have to get a new, new vacuum pump, unfortunately, so Make sure you take your time here and do this correctly. I'm gonna show you how this is how this actually works when we separate this. So taking our power steering pump off, just the four nuts and it'll come out. The studs may come out, they do, don't don't worry about that. But you can see inside the vacuum pump there there's a little cross uh, female drive section. Okay, on your power steering pump. 
you can see on the end of the pump, there is a drive dog that slips on the shaft that's pressed on the shaft there. That goes into that cross section. And as the engine turns the vacuum pump, the vacuum pump connects here. It's all connected here in this, this four, that four way section. And it drives the hydraulic pump or the power steering pump. So we've already got that taken care of. So now we're gonna show you how to separate the vacuum pump. The vacuum pump has got two 13 metric bolts that hold it on right here and right here. They're pretty tight. We've already had these loose, so I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen those up. Then you can see the vacuum pump itself. You can see this drive dog right here. This is actually what broke. This is the piece that we got from Mr. Gould. Uh, this is a pressed on piece. Uh, you just actually go in there with a power steering pump pulley puller, uh, pull that off, and then press your new one back on. Make sure you press uh, between these two dogs so you don't break the dogs. It's got an oil lineup hole here. Uh, that is just an oil lineup hole. There's no roll pin in here. This is just an oil feed hole. You wanna make sure that that's clean. Uh, if you turn the pump upside down, we've got quite a bit of oil in here, but uh, if you turn the pump upside down, there are pump veins in here for the vacuum pump. Oil's got those. They're in there, but if they fall out, they go back in one way. They want to, you want to make sure that they, they work with the curvature of the, uh, the curvature of the of the the pump body itself uh, centrifugal force makes those fly sling out uh, and create make a make contact with the outside of the housing uh, that's what creates your vacuum inside the pump uh, this seal right here we will be replacing it as well so this is our main section this seal right inside of here, you can see that's always your culprit for your oil leaks. We're gonna drive that out, drive that seal out. Now this part of the coupling here, this little, this bright silver part, that is the seal retainer. That's what actually holds the seal in. So we've got to drive it out from the back. Now you'll notice on this cross piece here, that there's a little dimple in there and you see that at the bottom of the screen there, probably six o'clock position. Uh, doesn't matter on the orientation of that, but we know that it's facing downwards, or it's gonna be, fa I'm sorry, it's gonna be facing upwards from where we drive the, uh, drive the seal retainer out. So we're just gonna turn this upside down here. Uh, it's a little bit higher on one side. What you can do is you can actually just put your two bolts in on one side to even it out. So we're gonna mark our seal retainer here so we get it back in the same, the same position. Now we're gonna drive the, the drive coupler out of there. So now what you want to do is you want to dry up the inside of this real well. Make sure that you get this dry. So you've got your retainer out. Then you have your drive coupling, which will be facing up as this way. So with it, it came out from the bottom, so it's going to face up. So we can just go ahead and take this, turn it upside down pop it back right back into the, uh, to the center section here. So our two seals that we're gonna replace on the, the seal retainer are this O-ring here, and then our main culprit on the inside here is our, is our main oil seal. 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and, and begin doing our reseal kit on the vacuum pump. Uh, working with our, our middle half here, uh, just don't forget to put your coupling, your little coupling key back in there. I've got the indention pointing towards the uh, pointing towards the crankcase or down as however you want to do it. You want to make sure you get everything cleaned up in there real good. All right, so now we're going to work with our seal retainer. Our seal retainer has got a seal on the outside. We we're going to be replacing this seal, so we're going to go ahead and remove that real quick. And then our main culprit seal inside of here, we're going to remove it. So we're going to drive this seal out. Uh, be driving it down with the spring. The open end of the seal is what is the direction we'll be driving. Be driving it down. Uh, what I usually use on this um, is just a one-inch socket, and that works just about perfectly. Rubber mallet, drive it out. main culprit there again. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to reinstall it. So we want to make sure that we get our new seal and our handy dandy Cummins kit. And we want to put it in with the spring side, the open end. I always face this towards the oil. That's the best way to, to always remember that. When you install this, you want to install this dry. So Clean this up real well. And we're gonna install it. We'll install this dry. So you'll wanna put your seal in here and get it started in it. And it'll go in a pretty good you know, ways by itself. Uh, it does have, a, of course, when you take this apart, you'll see it does have a, a, a stop in there. So it's only gonna go so far. Then I'm going to take a uh, inch and a inch and an eighth so inch and an eighth socket here, and we're going to go ahead and push it the rest of the way down. And make sure you work on all sides of this. Don't get it. Don't let it go in cockeyed on you there. That's good. That's what we're looking for. I want it to go down and seat flush. Don't overdo it on this. You can see we got our spring side of the seal facing outwards. Okay, so now go back into our little Cummins back here and get the seal, the O-ring seal for the O-ring seal for the, the seal retainer. So we're going to go ahead and put it on. All right. So we'll put a little bit of grease on here. Let's see. You want to put a little little assembly lube on there. And we're just going to go ahead and put this right back into our vacuum pump assembly. Now you just want to line everything back up with your marks that you made on here. That's why it's so important. It's, you know, it's O-ring sealed down, but we're going to get it lined up as best we can here. All right. So remember, the. The biggest thing to remember here is make sure that you have put your little coupler back in. So put the coupler in, line the seal retainer up, and we're going to use just a little seal and bearing driver. This is a 1.95 inch. Um, we're going to go ahead and put it down. You can see the seal retainer went down right to where its marks were. So everything seated good. Uh, we got our new seal in there. The seal is going to be pointed towards the spring side of the seal. is always pointed towards where the engine oil will be. Uh, everything's in correctly here. Flat side seal is in the right position. So, so we have one more little seal that we've got to work with here. Uh, back on our vacuum pump side, there's a mating surface seal. Here and it is just a little thin seal. You want to make sure that you 
be really careful with this. Clean it up before you install the new seal that will come when you're Cummins kit. And then we are going to put that seal in. And that's just a mating surface seal. We're going to give that just a little shot of grease. All right, so we got our new mating surface seal in and that's it, that's the, that's the whole reseal kit here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this back together just the same way it came apart there. Make sure you cog everything with the, with the gear there. Just working to get the drive dogs taken care of there. Then put our two 13 metric bolts back in. And don't tighten anything down until you know that you've got everything lined up. There is a standard or a little roll pin on the face of this vacuum pump. You wanna make sure that you don't force this. Make sure that everything is down and seated correctly. metric. Tighten these down. Make sure everything is flush. Again, when you're working with this housing, make sure, double check, and don't mean to keep repeating this, make sure everything is down and flush and seated correctly. If something is not flush and the housing is not down correctly, stop, pull it back apart, figure out what you got going on. Because if you bust this housing on this, this is going to be a very expensive and bad day for you. Uh, it can take a $30 day and turn it into a thousand dollar day or two or three hundred dollar day if you have to go buy one from the junkyard or whatever you have to do there so check this and make sure that this is you've got everything's turning correctly everything's free then all we can do is we go in and we put our power steering pump back on and you have the dogs in on this and you just want to make sure that you get everything lined up bolts wise and then you'll just turn the gear until the turn the gear until the it goes down and, and it's very close tolerances on here. So if you have problems like I am, you can pull it back apart. Figure out about where it's supposed to be there. So it's gone all the way up. Now we can go ahead and put our 15 metric nuts on them. There's four of these holding the hydraulic pump on. Now we just tighten these 15 metrics, tighten these up. So there you go, everything is good to go there. Everything is freed up there. The pump is ready to reinstall. We just go ahead and uh, our last seal in the kit is the seal between the vacuum pump and the engine. You just pull up, when you go to reinstall it, you just put this seal right back on, reinstall it, and you're good to go there. So this, is the, this was the installation of our vacuum pump seal kit for our 1996 to 2002 Dodge. Part number is Cummins 4089742. We've got these on our website. If you've got a question on this installation or any of our other installations, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Thank you.